All right, guys, Darren from Honest Money, and welcome back to another video. So in this week's video, we're going to be taking on company car tax. Now, many of you have probably looked into this before and have seen how complicated it can be. So what I'm going to do in this video is strip it back right to the fundamentals so you guys get the core information you need to make the right decision for you, your car, and your business if you run one. So whether you're an employee or a business owner, hopefully this video will help you to understand everything you need to know about company car tax and the tax liabilities you will face if you go down down this path. So company cars are provided by employers to employees and as they're classed as a benefit they are taxed as a benefit in kind and that is one of the main reasons maybe company cars aren't as popular as they could be as a benefit in kind tax can work out to be quite expensive especially if you have a car with high emissions. Now the benefit in kind is calculated by taking the vehicle's P11D value which is the list price of the vehicle plus any optional extras VAT and delivery costs and then multiply it by the benefit in kind percentage. Now that isn't the actual value you will pay, you then pay a percentage of that benefit in kind percentage based on your income tax threshold or if you're an employer, you'd also pay national insurance class one contributions on that as well. Employees pay benefit in kind tax at their income tax rate. So think about the tax rate you currently pay on your income, that is what you would pay on the benefit in kind value depending on what threshold you fall under. Now if you're an employer, you would also pay class one national insurance. So if you were given a company car to one of your employees, you would also be paying national insurance yourself on that. Or if you had a car for yourself, you'd be paying both benefit in kind as an employee of your business and the, as the employer, you'll be paying national insurance as well. So it's important to note that if you are the owner of a limited company, if you do take a company car for yourself, you will face double taxation as you'll be paying benefit in kind personally and also your business, which technically you own, so it's your money as well, you'll be paying national insurance as well. So double taxation for any limited company car owners that have a company car for themselves. Now, if you're an employee, um, you may be offered a car allowance instead. Now, the main difference between being offered a company car and a car allowance is with the car allowance, that allowance is taxed like income. So it's subject to income tax and national insurance whereas a company car is subject to benefit kind tax instead. So be aware that is a distinguishing factor between the two um, and go and do your own calculations based on that knowledge. Now, if you are the owner of your own company, you'll probably see that the recommendation is to use the MAP, which is the mileage allowance payments, instead of going the company car route. Unless you're looking at a really low emission vehicle, it's usually more tax efficient to use the MAP scheme. Now, how this works, you've probably seen it before, but not necessarily seen it be called the MAP scheme. And this is where you can claim 45p per mile for every business mile you do. So say, for example, you use 10,000 business miles in a year. Anything above 10,000 miles, you can only claim at 25p per mile. But 10,000 miles and below, you can claim 45p so say you put through 10,000 miles as business use you could get 4,500 pound out of your business completely tax-free and also your business as an expense to that business that 4,500 pound is deductible against corporation tax so there'd be no corporation tax liability on that money so that's why the MAP scheme is very popular and may be the best option for many people that aren't considering low emission cars or electric vehicles now employers can reclaim VAT on the purchase, so the expense of the car, they can reclaim VAT. This is limited though, so if the car is used for any sort of personal use, and that can be as little as one mile, in theory you can then only claim back 50% of the VAT, providing your company of course is VAT registered. However, if that car is 100% for business use, then it may be possible to reclaim 100% of the VAT. However, keep in mind if you are trying to claim the 100% business use, you cannot use that car to commute from home to work. It has to stay on site or at the premises. It cannot be used for commuting as that is classed as personal use. And usually it is possible to deduct 100% of the cost of the vehicle against your corporation tax to help reduce your corporation tax liability. Especially if you're leasing a car, it's usually possible to deduct 100% of those costs unless the CO2 emissions of the vehicle that you're looking at are above the LRR threshold, which is the lease rental restriction threshold. Now since 2000, 2018, the threshold has been set at 110 grams uh, per kilometer of CO2. 
but from April 2021, that is dropping down to only 55 grams per kilometer. So that is going down quite substantially. So from next year, a lot more vehicles will be subject to only being able to claim 85% back as a deductible cost against corporation tax rather than 100% of the cost. So up next, I'm gonna show you guys how to calculate your tax liability. So if you're an employee, I'm gonna show you how to calculate your benefit in kind tax. And if you're an employer, I'm gonna show you how to calculate the national insurance. Uh, before we move on to that slide, if you're enjoying this video, if you could just take one moment, scroll down and hit that like button, that'd be massively appreciated. And if you wanna see more content from me, please subscribe to the channel. So calculating your tax liability. The first thing I'd recommend is starting with is looking up your P11D value, um, your CO2, and your benefit in kind. And there are various websites that you can use to do this. The one I found earlier is linked here, which is comcard.co.uk. I'll put a link to this in the description. Um, and I'm gonna take you there now just to show you briefly how it works, but I have no affiliation with this website. I just found it really useful when I was looking for an example to show you guys. So here we are on the Comcar Company Car Tax website. So if you do wanna go here, just follow the link in the description or go to comcar.co.uk and then click on this box here, which is the Company Car Tax Calculator. Now this system is really, really simple. All you need to do is select the vehicle make. So if we choose, say for example, an Audi, maybe an A4, and then we choose this in petrol spec. This will then click through to another page where you can choose the exact model. So make sure you choose this accurately, otherwise you may get the wrong pricing. So we're gonna choose the one at the top. And then at the bottom, all you need to do is click on this button here, which says Quick Tax Calculation. And this will bring through all of the information you need to calculate how much benefit in kind you would be paying. And it also shows you it for future years as well, which is really, really beneficial. So at the moment, you can see this car has a P11D value of £36,065. Now, if you added any options to this car, the P11D value would go up. The percentage charge, so your BIK rate is 36%, which is crazy high. And if you took this car as a company car, you'd probably be crazy as it would cost you a fortune in benefit in kind. You can see here, the annual benefit in kind is £12,983. And if you're a 20% tax rate payer, you'd pay £2,600 per year on this. Or if you're in the 40% threshold, you'd pay over £5,000 benefit in kind tax on this. So that gives you an example of how to find out the P11D value of the car and it'll actually do the calculations for you. And before I take you back to the presentation, there are a couple of more websites which you guys might find useful. We've got the Fleet News website, the link is here. And again, I'll pop this in the description. And what's really useful, it has a table of all the emissions for the next few years showing you exactly what the percentage of BIK would be based on the CO2 emissions. So they also have it for vehicles registered before the 6th of April 2020, as there were some regulation changes, which I don't really wanna get into in this video, um, but it does cover it here in the small print. But if you scroll down a bit further, you can see here they've got it for cars registered after the 6th of April 2020, which I imagine is what many of you guys will be looking at, and you can see the new rates here. Now just to quickly explain this section here, uh, so when you're looking at cars or electric cars, you have free electric cars, you have hybrid cars, which are treated like normal cars. So hybrid cars you cannot plug in and the batteries in those cars are charged by the engine and by recuperating energy when you're actually using the cars, but it is mainly driven by the combustion engine that recharges the electric storage in that car. You then have PHEV vehicles, which are actually plug-in hybrid vehicles. So you can actually plug in to charge up the batteries in that car. And these cars are treated here. So they are treated based on their electric range only. So it doesn't matter what their actual petrol or diesel range is, it's all treated on their electric range. So if you've got a plug-in hybrid car or you're looking at a plug-in hybrid car, you need to look at how many miles it can do on electric alone. And there's actually a link on this website. It's either, where are we? I think it's further up. There we go. So check the zero emission range for plug-in hybrids. Click here and that will bring you to this page and it shows you all of the PHEV cars and what their electric range is. So if some of these will, for example, do 40 miles on electric only. So if that was doing 40 miles electric only, that would fall into this category here. So the benefit in kind percentage would be 8%, which may be low enough to put that vehicle through as a company car and be the most tax efficient choice. But you need to run the figures for your individual circumstances to see if that is the case. Also, there are many of the lease sites which will actually break these figures down for you. So you don't have to go through all of this process, you can just jump onto the lease sites. So for example, here I'm looking at the 21st Century Motors website, and we've got a kind of a middle of the road Mercedes here, showing the P11D stuff at the bottom. So they've got the P11D value, 
the benefit in kind and then examples of what you'd be paying at 20% and 40%. I'm gonna take you back to the presentation in a moment and show you how that'd work from the business perspective as well, the national insurance you'd be paying. But just before I do that, I just wanna quickly show you an example of an electric vehicle as that is one of the most tax efficient options to choose at the moment for a company car. So whether it's a Renault Zoe, which I've got here, or maybe a Tesla, if you choose an electric vehicle at the moment, as they have zero CO2 emissions, you will not be paying any benefit in kind tax in 2020 and 2021. Now it does go up next year to 1% and the year after to 2%, but the benefit in kind tax is super low and that applies to both the personal benefit in kind tax and the national insurance that an employer will be paying on it as well. So you can see here, despite the fact the P11D value of this car is nearly 30,000 pound, there are no benefit in kind liabilities to be paid. So let's go back to the presentation. And what I wanna do on this slide is show you guys some example figures so you can see how these figures are actually calculated. So if we take this first example, so say this was a traditional petrol or diesel car with a P11D value of 30,000 pound and the CO2 was 100 grams per kilometer, then this year it would have a benefit in kind tax rate of 23%. So if you're an employee of a company and you're in the 20% tax threshold, this is how things are calculated. So you take the P11D value of 30,000 pounds, times it by 23%, which is the BIK rate, and that gives you a benefit in kind of 6,900 pound. So you pay that at 20%, which is 1,380 pound for the year or 115 pound per month. Now, if you're an employee on 40%, those are the figures you would face. So you can see the higher your income tax threshold is, the more benefit in kind you will pay. And then finally on this example, we have an example for the employer. So you'd be paying class 1A national insurance on this at 13.8%. So you take the P11D value, times it by 23%, which gives you 6,900 as with the other two examples, but then we only multiply it by 13.8%, which is a national insurance insurance so the employer will be paying 952 pound per year or 79 pound per month to give that car to an employee or to give them car to themselves if they were an employee of their own company now to compare that to something like an ev which currently has zero emission with zero benefit in kind this is what you'd be looking at so for in this example i've given it a p11d value of 40000 pound as generally speaking evs are more expensive than the traditional petrol and diesel counterparts so an employee at 20% would be paying zero per year and zero per month the same for the employee at 40% and also the employer would not be paying any national insurance as the BIK rate is zero. Now this is only for 2020, 2021. This just changed from next year to 1%. So next year, for an example, on the same car with a 40,000 pound value, you'd be looking at the following figures. So you can see here, if you go the EV route or a car with super low emissions, it is possible to pay very, very little benefit in kind tax or class one national insurance. And when you can consider the possible corporation tax savings you could make and also the VAT that you can claim back. That is why EVs at the moment are very, very appealing for anyone that is thinking about a company car. So I hope you guys have found this video useful. If you did, I really appreciate it. If you could just take one moment, scroll down, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos from me, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in next week's video.